as well. Okay, so um, you can see here we have a few different assets. They're a little bit stylized. They're from uh, an old project from last year's master's project that me and Sawyer worked on. So do, these were kind of very quickly made and textured by Sawyer for a quick presentation we had to do. Um, and all of them, all of these different assets, uh, you know, they have a similar look, they have a, a similar vibe. Um, in fact, they're all sharing the same texture, even though they're all very different shapes and sizes, etc. And they, or rather, they're sharing two different textures. And what those textures are, are these, these two trim sheets here. So these trim sheets, uh, you know about trim sheets by now, they are a pre-made repeatable texture that you can use to um, essentially model things um, and simply apply this pre-made texture to them rather than texturing each one individually. Um, so I want to kind of show you how these are applied to some of these objects and how you can start modeling using these, etc. Um, I also can show you something that I've, I'm pretty sure you've seen this already through Sawyer's tutorials. Um, but the way that, for example, this one was made, um, this, um, where's our focus? Yeah. This was made first, this kind of um, panel, this front section, this, this base for the trim sheet has been made first, and that was taken into ZBrush and that was edited in ZBrush and um, then all of that was taken into um, actually this is this one isn't it? It's this one because it has a little pattern here um, but anyway that was textured afterwards and after it was textured it just started getting used it got, started getting used for all the different assets so let's hide these for a bit and let's open up let's start with the walls and let's just look at like a few of these um, now let's open this up and open our UV editor, throw it on the side, hopefully that works fine, turn off the toolkit, and we can see what's going on here. We have our texture here that this object has applied, um, and if you select the object, you can see its UVs are all kind of all over the place, they're overlapping, and they have um, actually a problem with them, which we didn't fix because we stopped using these objects. Is uh, some of them are also reversed. These ones seem to be fine, but some of them on the other assets are actually reversed as well. Um, but anyway, um, we have all of these UVs over here that are that are covering this area. And essentially, like this model was was made, and then we can select the UVs, and uh, as we make them, we overlap them over the areas we want. So if I re UV this, I'll give it a planar, and I'll give it a but about camera based and then we can cut this up so I'm going to cut it at the top here at the bottom it's already cut I'm going to cut it at the top and I think I'll cut it down this area as well um, and now I have like these separate these separate faces right these separate faces of of detail and these front ones as well here what are the rest of these middle ones actually this is the top piece this is the front piece, this is the bottom piece to the front, this is the back piece. Okay. Alright. Alright. Why is that going under? Does it? Oh, it has a thing underneath. That was never going to be seen. We don't need that, actually. Get out of here. Um, right, so let's unfold these. And let's move this stuff out of the way. Get out of here. Unfold this and lay it out so it's the same size. Clearly, my layout is not correct. Nice refresher for people who forget UVing easily. There we go. Now we have our UVs laid out. So let's start with like the front here um, and see where we want to place this. See, we could place this directly over this area and it's going to give us like this big, really solid rock front. But that doesn't really it looks a bit too big almost. Uh, it would make more sense to place it over this brick side and now we have this kind of very big bricked wall but again it looks quite large so I'd rather actually do half and half half of it be this this brick and the other half be not. Um, 
won't worry about this side. I'll just work on one side at a time for now. But it's pretty easy. I mean, let's just put it here. Scale up. And you can see that I'm actually overlapping the UV space. And usually that's a big no-no, as you know. Uh, we don't want to do that because we've got a texture in there. But since this is pre-textured, actually, when you overlap a UV space, you're just continuing on the UV sheet. You're, you're repeating it. And since this is a repeating texture, I can actually overlap the UV sheet and it creates a seamless texture. Um, or rather, at least seamless enough. Uh, if you zoom in, you see these issues. Granted, I will say this was for a game that we're going to see from this distance. Um, so those little details will not be picked up. Um, but also, we want it to actually be visible from that distance as well. And you can see that I'm starting to even deform the UVs, not really worrying too much about wherever I'm stretching them. And that's because the only thing we're kind of actually worried about is um, whether it looks good, uh, which is usually the only thing we're worried about anyway. Um, let me put this over here. Let me keep this one on top of it, actually. Come on. Somewhere like this, and then we can grab both of them, put them in the center. I want this top one to get these bricks, and I want the other one to get the rest of it. But let's see, because see, I make it too big and it's starting to pick up pieces I don't want. It's starting to look weird. So let's just grab this, um, shrink it down like that. We're starting to get like this top brick level. And these ones, we can make it overlap a little bit. So that it gets some of that <clears throat> and we're getting like this kind of weird effect just by kind of trying to overlap it in an interesting way um, now this strip here is bothering me because I don't know what that is and what it's doing here uh, but let's see if we can create a pattern for it to, to use it's looking a bit stretched it looks a bit weird that's more accurate um, this down here, this this strip is weirding me out as well. I don't like this strip. This is because it hasn't been broken up, has it? Yeah, we don't need the bottom of that either because that's never going to be seen from a top-down game, which is, you know, still something to consider. You know, how is this game going to be viewed and experienced? Um, you might, you don't want to do stuff that isn't essentially necessary. Um, let's cut it from the top because we want this to be mirroring the other front side so these two these two sides here um, let's grab face these two sides are just this and this one so I want them to be on top of each other um, this is just me talking you through like kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing it's not an example of how to do things or anything um, it's kind of interesting but it looks weird what if we make it a little bigger Nah, I want these to actually have something to actually be covering something. Let's just do this. But you do have to consider, even though I'm scaling things up now, you have to consider the size of the texture. This is starting to look very blurred and repeated compared to that. And that's not really looking good. It's not really doing it for me. Um, so I'm just going to do maybe something like this again. Maybe even pull it up. Nah, I'll leave it here. Um, even though it's a bit dark, I'm not really liking how dark it is, but uh, you can only do so much when you're trying to cheat and be quick. Um, and that's essentially something that trim sheets are for. Trim sheets are for efficiency. Um, they allow you to work very quickly. Um, they allow you to texture assets uh, very quickly simply by applying UVs. And they're only needed for specific things. You know, like, uh, you can't texture every single thing you have with a trim sheet. You're going to have to, um, you're going to have to consider whether it's useful for what you want to do or not. <clears throat> Let's keep going. And I'll just finish this thing. And then I'll take it over to Unreal. And show you guys some other stuff to do with textures, etc. Um, let's cut these boys up, grab them, unfold them, lay them out, yada yada. 
that's the what what's this another face this is on the top and we still can't see it. okay let's delete that as well gotta cut these vertices now shift x and if there's any questions so far I don't I think you guys have gone through um, trim sheets quite a lot but I think some people still sometimes get confused about what modularity actually is um, and to kind of explain that a little more clearly now uh, modularity is literally just anything that you're using um, repeated for efficiency for example yes if you're making kind of a unique level where every single object is, is unique every single room is unique and and um, you're specifically designing every single room and every single object um, then modularity isn't going to be as useful for you. You're not going to making assets that are going to be used over and over again. But think about any game that has, <clears throat> you know, similar buildings in the distance or similar structures or the same kind of barrels, the same kind of torches on the walls. You know, any kind of game that has these repeated elements uh, is essentially already um, made in a modular sense so that, you know, for sake of being able to make it. I will show you guys an example of some modular things we did for our master's project. We just want to stack these. Uh, where's stack? Arrange and layout. Stack shells. There we go. Now they're all together. We're gonna do that for these as well. We just need to rotate these ones so that they're the right size. Move these. Okay, so now we can stack shells actually we can grab all of them and just click stack similar and it's gonna auto stack them into their into their positions um, now obviously you might not want this to be the same on every side but I'm just trying to get through this rather quickly now um, because I don't want you guys to spend too much time on, on listening to me talk about this I want you to guys to see it in the engine itself um, Let's open this up, let's stick it in the middle again. And if I want to, I can kind of, you know, I can move some of the shells, which one is this? Or kind of scale them down and move them up and move them down to make kind of different parts of it uh, stand out so that they don't all look the same. I'm just essentially trying to make it look different in any way I can at some point. Um, and I don't like how this is looking, but I do want to just finish this now so I can move on in my explanation. Let's rotate this this way, maybe. See if we can get something here. Um, one downside to what I'm doing now is that I haven't exactly planned ahead what I want this to look like, how I want this trim sheet to look, what environment it's going to be used at. Um, and uh, you can see the middle piece here kind of works all right, but this is mostly by chance. Um, the benefit to doing an environment that's modular and having a reference for it like most of you do is you can look at what's around, you can look at the walls, you can see what kind of textures you're going to need. And you can start making these trim sheets that will actually be used for those specific textures and the specific models you have in mind. When we were doing this for the game, we we're kind of freestyling it. We we're trying to very quickly get through it um, because we had a very uh, tight deadline on it. Um, but for you guys, you do have a little bit more time to really think about uh, what you're what you're making this stuff for. Now, here's like all the modulars uh, that we had, and I exported all of them using the the standard exporter. Now I'm just going to go into Unreal and put them in there. I think I'm going to use the, the, the year two demo. I'll open that up. Um, whilst that's loading, oh, I'm going to have to blur the YouTube video again. Whilst that's loading, does anyone have any questions? I'd like to interject if I can. Yeah, you can interject. You can interject. So one of the one of the things that you said there was that was um, uh, 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 maybe like 30 seconds ago was um, it just by chance happened to work out and stuff like that. Well, back in the day when I was making those trim sheets, it was it's kind of 
I, I knew what style the game was going to be in or what we had planned it to be in. I knew kind of what the stone was going to look like. I knew what the material of the stone was going to be, but I didn't know what assets I was going to make. That's where trim sheets come into play, because I can make a trim sheet with all the designs on it. I can make a trim sheet with all of the bricks, everything on it. And then I can make a model from that trim sheet. I do, I'm not restricted to getting a model and then texturing it using the trim sheet. I'm creating a model from the trim sheet. So it, it kind of it kind of works out a little easier that way. Um, I think one of the issues you're having, maybe Stefan, is that you didn't make the trim sheet, right? So like you've got to <laughs> no, you've got to try and like oh oh what kind of and you're also doing no research as well. Like so it's like okay this this trim sheet has this kind of style on it. What year is that? I'm gonna have to find out what kind of time in history this is. I'm gonna have to like look at these buildings and stuff. But obviously, when I made the trim sheet, I would have known that. So. Keep that in mind. That's all I have to say. No, of course, like uh, um, the specific project you're working on will have different, uh, different connotation, different art style, different aesthetic, and you guys do all all the work you guys make will be done with that in mind. Um, but this is to exemplify that how you can actually use a trim sheet after it's after it's been made more specifically what it can be used for. Now I'm just going to try something here. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I'm going to try something. See what happens. Let's delete this middle thing actually. Delete these under ones. Uh, let's grab all of this. Don't grab that. Don't grab that. This. No. Didn't want to do it. Oh, it's because I didn't delete this. Excuse me. Try that again. Doesn't want to do it. So we got one, two, three, four. You have a vertex in the corner there. A vertex. Oh, what? Yeah, he. There we go. Boom. I'm just wondering if I can make something out of this. Give it a planar. Can't bait it. And a really nice tool in the UV toolkit, if you go into Cut and Sew, you have one called Create UV Shell, which literally lets you just grab a bunch of faces and create a UV shell out of them straight away. So that's really useful. And you can just kind of cut up your model just using that tool as well, which is great. And sometimes this is actually faster than using the cut and sew tools, um, which usually we use almost exclusively. Right, and then we can just break this thing apart and start figuring out where we want to put what. Um, I don't know what this asset is supposed to be, but. Uh, the point is that you can model and then apply your um, UVs, as Sawyer was explaining, which speeds up texturing quite a lot, as you can imagine. I'm going to be very impressed with what you come out with. I'm not. I don't. <laughs> I like to make a little podium, and then it looked like a weird box. So, you know. Uh, it's also useful to put in like something that allows you to break up things between two texture so for example i have this here but it doesn't really break up well there's no kind of break in the stone or anything like that and that's kind of really useful to have depending on what you're making um so that it fits more more naturally uh over what's happening so maybe if i put this more in so that there's more stone break near it, it starts to look more logical depending on what you're making uh, but anyway, let me stop messing around with stone and go into Unreal. Uh, I think I would just use this this one. I won't go into the other one. Uh, the other one has more shaders and stuff. Anyway, now, this is Unreal. Uh, I am on a toaster oven. So, you know, it may die at any point. Be prepared. But that's okay. We're going to we're gonna do what we can. Uh, let's go on our desktop. Year 2.0. 
to here two like six okay so these are all the assets um, and I'll let me make sure I put them somewhere that makes sense uh, week six exam example there's no space in there we go stick them in there uh, and I'm just going to click import all I won't worry too much about the extra stuff at the moment and let me find their textures as well because that's important uh, no. no to all Okay. I think we got most of their textures, right? We got occlusion, we got normals, we got bent normals, that's interesting. We didn't get any metallic or anything though, because we were working on a stylized game at the time. And you can see when I've imported assets that already have maps applied, it does automatically apply the maps as well, which may or not be something that you want, um, but nonetheless, we can start putting these things in here and regardless of what they are and, and how many they are um, they will all use the same unreal material uh, which is why you were able to essentially make something put its UVs in place stick it in unreal and apply the same material now I'm not gonna mess around with the materials uh, in terms of making them etc except except I will <laughs> except I will let me delete them for a moment. I want them to be blank. Uh, so I can show you what you do when you have multiple materials as well. So I just call this one. Uh, open up this material quick. I'll just stick in the color. And I'll stick in the normal. Really simple, nothing fancy. And why not? We'll put in the AO as well. It's fine. And that's all this one. Let's save that. You can do it. Okay. And let's make another one. We'll call this two. And let's stick in the other maps in this one. So that's a color. That's a normal. This is our occlusion. Excellent. Let's save that and we'll close both. Okay, so when you have an asset that has uh, multiple maps, so let's just take this really simple uh, thing for example. When you have an asset that has multiple textures it's using, uh, because if we go back here, you can notice that actually, let's go to our, uh, depending on which part I click, it's actually going to show me different texture map. That's because this asset has um, multiple uh, shaders into it. It has multiple Lamberts. It's got one Lambert that has this texture, and it has another Lambert on specific faces that has a different texture, right? And you don't even if this object didn't have a texture um, didn't have any kind of texture map into it um, essentially this still lets you know what the different sections of your model are you want them to have different if you want them to have different textures if you want to break them up a little um, you essentially give them different um, different numbers for the different sets of UVs you have um, if you do have different sets of UVs so for example if I'm working on um, something very large that's made up of two objects and these two objects have two separate UV shells they're gonna use two separate sets of textures you can give them two different colors like this two different Lamberts why why would you do that because when you go into Unreal and I don't remember if we went over this in, with Unity when you go into Unreal it will actually separate those two colors into uh, different different material sets 
So for example, here you see uh, the you know the kind of pillars on the side of the wall are one material type and, and the middle is another one. And as we've exported this into Unreal, it's remembered that, it's noticed that there are two different Lamberts, and it's actually split up the textures it will use into two different material sets. And if I grab one of these textures now, I can put it in one and the other, and it's going to affect either one or the other. So this is really useful if you have assets that are very big and you split up the multiple materials, or if you have objects that are made up of multiple different components that have different textures, or if you're just using multiple trim sheets on the same kind of asset. So now that this has two sets, I can put them in the two different material sets of the object and that's here in the details panel where you have all its transformations and everything. Click that asset, find it here, it has elements 0 and 1, those are the two materials that we've preset um, in Maya. And just as a quick recap for anyone, you right click your asset, add its existing material or a new one, you add existing material and you add the material that you want. And now that I actually remove the texture and just turn it to blue and red for all of them, you can see how actually um, all of the assets, show the trim sheet again, we got the red trim sheet and the blue trim sheet. And you can see how all of the assets are kind of using a mix. You don't have to, um, this just happens to be how we did it at the time. Uh, you can use the same tree sh trim sheet for an entire asset. You don't need to be mixing them up but uh, it is something that you can do um, that you can keep in mind if it's, it's gonna help, if it's gonna help you at any time. Um, one more thing to kind of show, um, let's say that I'm making a lot of these walls here and I want, I, none of them have the texture applied, I, I've changed the texture or whatever, I need to make sure the texture applies to all of them. Um, the way you do that is instead of placing the asset and changing its materials here, you can simply double click the asset in your browser here, in your content browser, and it's going to come up with a whole separate window specifically for this asset. And I've mentioned this before, um, but you can do the same thing with materials here, which probably will make more sense now. Um, so let's just put in a few of these walls here. Um, so now in this content browser, in, the, in this window specifically for this asset, I can change things for the asset in its core, in its content browser, in the main parent. And that will apply those changes to every single copy of the asset we have in the scene. So for example, if I start to apply the materials, I can apply the materials here in the core of the asset, save it, and it's gonna apply it to all the assets that are in the scene, except the ones I've manually edited. It's gonna apply to all the assets in the scene and every future object that I import in here, right? Um, so this is the system you, that can be used for your environments, for your walls, for different panelings. You can essentially make a trim sheet in Maya and, stand, and then as you create your assets, apply the trim sheet to the assets and make them work. And when you apply them to Unreal, you can very easily just apply the material to your whole scene for any object that's using the asset and it just speeds up the modeling of assets that are appropriate to have a trim sheet because for example if you're making a desk and a lamp obviously you're just going to texture them normally if you're making a big hall or a dungeon or whatever that has like 50 different walls and you know a bunch of different flooring a bunch of different ceilings but they're all kind of using the same material, it's much easier to create a trim sheet and simply apply it to every single one of those unique assets that are pretty much the same material, right? Instead of retexturing every single one. And you're saving massively on texture space now because for all of these assets, I'm using like two materials. And that's a lot of space saved in the game. That's a lot of memory saved in the game as well. And it's for efficiency's sake as well. It's for efficiency of work and for efficiency of actually computing power as well in the end. Um, just going to check if there's any more questions. 
Um, something I wanted to try here. So, whilst I try and do something, um, is there any kind of detail you think I'm missing about trim sheets that you think is kind of net useful to, to go over? Um, not, not particularly. The only, really, I think, uh, one of the one of the things about trim sheets is they're really versatile. So you don't necessarily either like maybe maybe uh, when we were doing material blending in Unreal. You know, you can you can combine that with a trim sheet as well. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So say you don't want to you, you say you want to get all these bricks and stuff together and you want to model this trim sheet. And once you've baked it and stuff and you think, actually, I'm going to use this trim sheet on stuff that I have already got a material for, a tileable material for. Well, maybe then that trim sheet just becomes a normal, just becomes like an added normal. And you can material blend instead. You don't have to necessarily even texture your trim sheet if you've already got a tileable texture as well on it. They're quite, they're quite cool. I like them a lot. And, and once you get, a once you get a hang of them, they're, they're really, they're just, they're just so fun. You're saying that you can kind of, you don't necessarily have to have a texture on a trim sheet. You can just use it for the normal maps or something like that. If you've already yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like say you already have this, like in my, in my previous uh, project, I, I had all this stone texture. I had one pretty much universal stone texture and it was tileable. And it was ready to go. And I started making trim sheets. And they were going on the same wall. And then, so instead of me wasting the data to texture the trim sheet, I can just say, screw that, take the normal from it. And now instead of having three maps that are all 2K, I now only have one because I'm hijacking another. And that can, again, become even faster. Especially if you plan it out as well. If you think forward a little bit, you can really save a lot of time. <clears throat> I think what we can do for the last 20 minutes um, is I'm going to try and apply a trim on this and see if I can make it look okay. Um, I think what we, can, what we can do for the last 20 minutes is um, should we make our own designs? How do you texture the trim sheet though? Okay, um, if you mean should by make your own designs do you mean like the little patterns and things that we have on them etc if so then yeah i mean yeah you can you can make your own designs you can make them 3d you can find alphas online that you can use you can use photoshop as well uh with you know the texturing tools you can finish the texturing and then use photoshop on top of it uh it is also you are working on uh, with some kind of source material. So you can use the patterns from the source material as references, uh, or if you feel like the source material is very vague or very simple, you can add your own in there as well if you think it makes the scene look better. Um, how do you texture the trim sheet? Well, for this one specifically, I believe that um, we had this, this here, which did you did you use this as the high poly this one here or did you put this in ZBrush first or oh, that's the that's the mid poly so I made that in Maya then I imported that into ZBrush right I made it all look like stone and everything oh goodness and then I um and then I just baked that in substance just like pretty much everything else yeah and I baked it to a perfect square it's a plane that is a perfect square right so and plane. I've yeah, like go ahead. This. And this was your low poly. Yeah, my low poly would have been just one, literally, literally one poly, a perfect square. And then I would have made sure that in my UV, my my UV sheet, when I'm setting up my UVs for my plane, that I have shell padding and island padding to zero. Okay. I'm trying to find the front here. I don't think I have a front. Perfect graphic, front. There you go. Where is it? What's happening? Oh, it's because it's in the side. Oh, because your trim sheet's facing the side. Okay, I got it. Uh, right view. There we go. All right. So essentially, um, this is this is simply what was taken into ZBrush in detail and 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 um, 
and and everything and and made to look um the way it was wanted made it made it to look like stone made it to look broken up and etc and that and then the high poly from um the high poly from zbrush was simply baked onto a plane like this it was baked on a simple square um and that then allows it to um, this is pretty much what the final result is, except with the color as well. So after the Z brush edit is baked onto a plane, this is the texture that's output without the color, of course. And then in Substance Painter or a different tool, you can texture it in addition and do some more to it. Um, that's how that's how you would texture the trim sheet. You essentially make it in 3D first, and then texture that panel, that little panel, and then use that as a simple simple square base um, let's stand on the surface one of these oh and then we will edit it somehow I kind of want the other one though um, so for the rest of it we only have like 15 minutes left and stuff like that um, mid poly exists <laughs> never designed any suit okay um, we're I'm gonna go into the help waiting room um, if anyone wants me to look over their projects, um, I'm going to stay for like a little 5-10 minutes after the session as well, so we have some time. If anyone wants to check out some project, come to the help waiting room. Uh, I hope you understand uh, how you know these, these trim sheets are supposed to work. Um, I think you're all kind of moving ahead with your project at slightly different paces, but you're mostly all on track. Some of you need to kind of make sure you're putting in the time and, and and kind of catching up as well now by what are we we're week six now so we're halfway through and you guys are gonna need to texture and you're gonna need to use unreal and render in unreal as well um so all of your and and we started blocking out in week one or two um and your block outs were ready by week one or two and all you have left is detail modeling so we've done about four weeks of just detail modeling if you finish your block out in week two. Um, that's a lot of time. Uh, so I um, want you guys to actually finish your modeling at the possible latest end of next week. <clears throat> if you're already pretty far ahead with your modeling, finish your UVs by the end of next week. Um, if you're kind of behind on your modeling, start UVing at least by the end of next week like that's that's still like danger zone you know because the end of next week is the start of week eight right which leaves you four weeks for texturing in unreal that's not a lot so I would like you guys to really finish up this stage as quickly as you can because we are halfway through now and ideally we can start texturing and, and doing all this stuff and trim sheets and yada 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 um, from like next Monday. Um, so Sawyer and everyone are gonna be coming around during your support sessions and they're really gonna try and push you to see how you can get to the next stage as quickly as you can. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's the, that's the, sorry, one sec, I'm gonna do a cough. <coughs> Oh, better. So that's the kind of stage I want you guys to be in. That's a little shock. It's week six. Let's get our, our butts in gear. You've all been working really well, I have to say. And you've all been very efficient and very, very uh, quick with your development. Last year, by this time, you hadn't really f even finished modeling desks, some of you. So you can see you've come a long way. Um, but I don't want us to run out of time. So I do want you guys to get through this modeling stage ASAP. Don't cut corners, of course. Work smart, but do work hard as well. Okay, I'm going to go in the help room. And if anyone wants some extra feedback or some help, jump in there. I left myself muted for, for too long. I left myself muted for too long after the last cough. Right, I was saying, you guys are doing good progress, but let's keep working smart and working hard so that we don't fall behind. I'm going to be in the help room. Come and see me. Um, if you want to talk, and yeah, Sora and everyone are going to be coming around and, and pushing you guys a little bit. Just cool. Everyone good? Everyone swell? Swell.
Excellent. Okay, guys. Have a good have a good Monday and have a good week. And I'll see you guys in the classes around. All right. Bye bye for now. Where's all that shit in there? All over the counters. Watch it. That's washing. Everything. Washing yet to be done.